Ten super useful Illustrator hacks that every designer must know. Make sure to follow these along so that you can get handy and remember these. Let's go. So let's say you are making tiny changes into the design, and to see how it's impacting the overall design, you zoom in and zoom out again and again. So what you can actually do is just go to window, click on new window. It will open up a similar window, and go to window once again. Click on arrange and click tile. And here you can on the other side you can view the full design. And this side you can make changes in the zoom in version. You can also press Control H in this window so that you don't see the anchor points. So it will be easier for you to make changes and review it. Side by side, very easy. All right. So in this design, it's the same design but different variations. Client likes the design, but he wants to change the font of bottom rounded. So I have to select the font in every design and change it, which is going to take so much time. What you can instead do in these type of cases is just select one text of same font and go to select same and click font family. It will select. All the text with the same font or font family. Now you can easily change it. So it's all replaced in just one single go. Number three is again about the text. So you know when you type something in Illustrator, you get it in My Right Pro font, and the size is also very small. And I really don't like it because when I'm working on logos or you know packaging design, I want to see very nice font in the first go, and it's very frustrating that I have to change it first. So what we can do is go to window, type character styles, character style options, and here basic character formats. You can change the font. That will be the default font when you type anything in Illustrator in the first row. So let's say opens and font style bold. We can also change the size. For me, I want at least two fifty because I'm working on tutorials a lot these days. Um, you can also change other things like scale, character color, and it will automatically be that color. But I want to keep it black, so let's do it. So the next time you type in anything, it will be in same font and style that you have selected. All right. So next tip is also about the font. Let's say you want to add outline to it. You go to window, and here you add a new outline. Let's change the color. Also, you know, you can select numbers from here. But if you want to increase the size in decimals, you have to like type in seventeen point two. But to do this quickly, you can press Control along, and now when you scroll, the size will be increased or decreased in decimals. This tip applies not only to the stroke size. But almost everywhere, wherever you see a number, for example, font size, Pathfinder, stroke size. Now let's add some effect. Going to Pathfinder and Offset Path. It's looking fine here, but when you increase the distance, you get a result like this. So you have to expand it, and then using the Shape Builder tool, you subtract these paths and then join them again, which is very frustrating. So what you can do is click OK. Now once again, go to Effects, click Pathfinder, and add. Now it's added. You can also change it. It's editable and super easy. All right. So let's say you have a stroke and you want to change the color of this stroke. So what you do is press the I. For the eyedropper tool and click on the color that you want to pick, but it picks the fill instead, and it's very frustrating. Either you have to copy the color code from here and then paste it in the stroke 
so you get the same color like this or or you pick the color and then change it from here and both of them are really frustrating so the best way to do is select the stroke press the eyedropper tool and press shift when you're picking the color it will pick the color on the stroke itself this is super useful and i got to know about it two years after i started working on illustrator so for two years i struggled with this so this one is my favorite because i got to know about this few days back only and it's very embarrassing all right so you have a stroke with the profile and you want to change the direction of this either you can do this by going to stroke and clicking over here or you can actually just rotate it both of them are little time consuming but what you can do is just select the stroke click on p so the pen tool is selected click on any anchor point press control and drag to the other side and the direction will be changed just like this so next is about the pathfinder let's say i have these two shapes here and i want to subtract this shape from this circle what we can do is just press select the shapes press shift m for the shape builder tool press alt and it's removed but you cannot edit it later so it's destructive editing and same way goes for the pathfinder also just select this and press here it will be subtracted but again it is destructive which means you cannot go back later to that shape so if you want to make changes you can't do that so what is the best way that i recently learned is select the shapes press this but while pressing also press alt now the shape is subtracted just like before but it is constructive editing which means you can change it later like this the shape is there only but removed from the other shape so next one is for adding shadows when you are creating characters or illustration so let's say we have to add shadow here you know how it is outside the shape also and you have to you know subtract it later which is a time consuming task especially when you have to add it at a lot of places so what you can actually do is select this shape on which you want to add the shadow click on this tiny button that says draw inside now start drawing and it will be drawn automatically in this shape no matter wherever you go so here is the final hack let's say you have a lot of objects in your workspace and you want to export all of them so you create artboards for each object and it's very time consuming and frustrating so what you can actually do is just make group of all your objects separately go to window click on asset export and then drag and drop all your objects into this window so you'll see it like this now from here you can select which format do you want whether you want to export as jpg png and some other formats and click export and there you go so in just one click you have all your objects exported as png that's it and i have made a youtube video like this after so long so please let me know your opinions in the comment section and if you have any suggestions for the next video do let me know about that also and sorry for my voice i was suffering from cold but i really wanted to do it this time so thank you and see you soon